Dr. Organic, the good, the bad and the ugly. You recently asked me on my Instagram if I could do the video about um, cosmetics from Dr. Organic. As you can see I have a few of them here and you need to know that some of them are indeed very good and have amazing like ingredients list but some of them unfortunately are not. So today we'll talk about both of them, meaning about those that I personally use or would use and those that aren't that good. Before we start, I would like to make sure that you don't make the crucial mistake that I've made before with Dr. Organic. I will show you on the screen, but here I will be looking, for example, in the toothpaste. Uh, you have this little like a box here and it says ingredient list and you think that it's ingredients list, but this is actually not. This is just the key ingredients. The real ingredient list is actually here next to it. Can you see these little uh, letters there? And it's like with every single product. So do not get mistaken. It's easy to see on the website, but it's not easy to see on the actual product. And that was a mistake that I've made. And for example, let's start here maybe from the toothpaste. I got this toothpaste. Now, I created a separate video about toothpaste, but um, I need to point out a particularly at this one because uh, here I'm not gonna discuss about if fluoride is good or not. It's uh, relatively uh, natural, it's good, uh, it's not tested on animals. But what I didn't notice, because again, I looked only here, it contains phenoxinoethanol as a preservative. If you watched my channel for a while, you know everything about phenoxinoethanol. However, if you are new to my channel, I'm going to give you a quick explanation. Phenoxinoethanol is a preservative that is allowed to be in any formula, any cosmetic, uh, no more than 1% uh, concentration of no more than 1%. If it's above 1%, it is proven to be toxic, it is proven to actually with long-term use damage your organs, uh, such as kidneys, such as liver, uh, such as even your lungs in terms of inhalation, when it comes to inhalation, if you inhale it, uh, let's say in a mist or toner mist, you know, and it also can lead you to a cancer and it has been proven. Now, if you can imagine, if you have phenoxyethanol in more than one product and it's if you look at your products, especially if you use Sunkin, Sunkin, I, I don't know how to, I'm very bad with pronouncing, sorry. Uh, they have phenoxyethanol in every product, so it builds up. And then if you have it in your toner, in your serum, in your cream, in your uh, night uh, skincare, in your shampoo, in your toothpaste, this is like no way you can not have health issues. So that's about phenoxyethanol. So for example, the toothpaste, in my opinion, even if I liked it and I fortunately I got it, uh, it's a no because of phenoxyethanol. Let's jump to another example. I need to make a little bit of explanation also that I've tried to go through the entire range of the cosmetics because they have like so many, but guys, it's like this video would be like one hour long. So I just decided to focus on a few different smells and like uh, key products. So uh, I'm not going to talk about the face gel that I have here and the deodorants as I have already did separate videos about them. So I'm going to leave them on the side and if you would like to see my separate videos, uh, go and watch them later. Let's see other products that they offer. We will start from body wash and I have here aloe vera. You, have a look, you can have a look at the screen. And look how nice is this ingredient is. It doesn't start from uh, water, water is the second ingredient, it starts actually from aloe vera leaf juice. Then I want to touch base on sodium lauryl methyl isonetinate, or however do you pronounce it. Please do not mix it with SLS, they are totally two different, different things. Uh, so looking at this ingredient list, I would give it thumbs up, absolutely yes. And so the next shower gel will be cocoa butter uh, body wash and here we have a little bit different situation because again we start from aloe leaf juice uh, which is great but here we have perfume uh, literally like very high in the ingredients it's meaning that everything after perfume does not really uh, work whereas with aloe gel uh, aloe vera uh, shower gel we had perfume at the bottom of the ingredients but as well there is nothing but i can say about this one 
Let's move quickly to another one and another one will be a shampoo and have a look at the screen again we start from aloe leaf juice nothing uh, there no, there's nothing there that would uh, write my concerns and what I do like about it the perfume is at the end of an ingredients list because if you have perfume like at the beginning of ingredients list everything that is after perfume does not really matter does not really have any impact uh, on you which is a bad thing because if I have nice if you have nice things uh, nice good ingredients you really want them to work after shampoo let's jump into the conditioner and here again we start from aloe vera leaf juice and there is nothing I could say potentially bad about this uh, about this conditioner. I like the fact that the perfume again is at the bottom of the ingredients list. So uh, all the extracts we have apple extract and uh, other things they will actually make an impact on your hair, which is a good thing. Another product that we'll be discussing today is cream, aloe vera cream, concentrated cream. Does it say yes? And then we have, again, ingredients list, we start from aloe vera leaf juice. And then going down, you have a look at the screen I'm looking here, we have uh, different oils, different extracts, and then perfume is not at the bottom of the ingredients list, but it's nothing wrong with that because it is actually, after all, the extracts and oils. So absolutely there is nothing, um, nothing that we could eventually uh, say that something is not okay in here. We have also glycerin quite high in the ingredients list and we have also uh, alcohol, acetyl alcohol, so nothing bad is just for antibacterial reasons as a second ingredient. Now you need to be aware that this is a okay cream I would say um, but it's not gonna be wow cream you know. I personally wouldn't really get this cream because I have certain expectations towards my cream, but there's nothing I would say that it's unsafe or anything like that. If you're on a budget or if you just don't want to spend much money on cosmetics, because I'm not sure about the uh, price of this cream, but it's not too expensive. Uh, this product contains a minimum of 70% organic ingredients, absolutely go for it. Let's jump into another example and here I will have an eye gel, again aloe vera and this is something I will not recommend for you and I wouldn't get it myself. Why is that? Here we start from aloe leaf juice, then we have water and then we have alcohol D-nut. Then we go after, then we have all the extracts, cucumber and so on and then we go and we have pure alcohol. So we have two the worst alcohols possible contained in one product. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I am going to explain you how uh, alcohol denat and alcohol work. Basically, they have an ability to penetrate your skin, so they therefore they damage the first barrier of your skin. Meaning that apart from drying your skin, your skin being so dried out will try to produce more oil to moisturize it itself. Therefore, you will end up having breakouts and this is a big no-no. I understand that it's only like under eye but still I wouldn't get it. And then I have three more concerns towards this product. Another one is Carbomer. Mm, now Carbomer is uh, responsible for uh, keeping the viscosity of the cosmetic and Carbomer can be harmful when it's in very high temperatures. Obviously it's not enough of this carbomer here in this product to make any harm to you but I still I do not like to have it in my um, uh, skincare sorry in my skincare uh, and this is my personal opinion so that's why it's highlighted with light blue. Then we have ethyl uh, hexyl glycerin. I spoke about it a lot about my uh, on my channel have a look at the screen and then again Phenoxyl ethanol. I am not going to repeat myself again about this one. Okay, let's jump to another example. Next one we have aloe vera skin, uh, sorry, uh, skin lotion. 
Right, uh, and then we get started from uh, aloe vera leaf juice, then we have uh, water and so on. Uh, guys, there's nothing but I can absolutely say about this product. I am just uh, looking here into ingredients list. Perfume is at the end of the ingredients list. Then we have oil extract before perfume. I think it's okay. Let's move to another one. So the next product that we have here is cocoa butter body butter. Okay. So, um, what do we have here that concerns me? Um, the only really thing that concerns me is that the perfume is in the middle of the ingredients list and then all the extracts, on the, all, literally all the extracts are after the perfume, meaning that they don't really work on our skin, they don't really matter in this particular product because unfortunately they have been put after the perfume. The next product that we'll be talking about is cocoa butter body scrub and here um, what concerns me a lot and have a look at the fourth ingredients magnesium aluminium silicate or however you pronounce it. Well, the thing is, before you will go and comment down below that it's not the same as aluminium, I am going to show you the research that I have discovered on the, uh, Nash, in the National Library of Medicine online, uh, which is the final rep report of, uh, on the safety assessment of aluminium silicate, magnesium aluminium silicate. And unfortunately, it has been proven as toxic. This is a very long report. I am going to put it on the screen for you. I will highlight the most important points about it. But basically what it's saying is magnesium aluminium silicate was a weak primary skin irritant in rabbits. I know it's horrible but they did animal testing and you see it is what it is and it's not nice to read it but and also it has caused the eye irritation in rabbits why tested on rabbits now the only reason being it has been kind of certified as safe is here listen Topical application of magnesium aluminium silicate to human skin daily for one week produced no adverse effects. For one week. What about long term use? You see guys, most of the tests, they do not bear in mind, take into account long term use and you need to understand it. So here I absolutely disagree with this ingredient. If your opinion is different about it, that's fine with me. I am sharing here with you my opinion. Also, that will be a little bit off topic, but I need to touch base on that the uh, um, talc is a hydrated magnesium silicate. Because it has a unique crystalline structure that differs from ingredients addressed in the safety assessment, talc is not included in this report. And if you've seen my previous videos, we have been talking about talc a lot, and there is a huge article in Financial Times that is taking into account all the court cases and it's I think oh I need to check the article but it was like 19,000 court cases and four billion dollars to pay off to people that got cancer from Johnson's baby talk so apparently it wasn't included in that report wondering why let's have a look at the mask and here i've got a different uh, smell with uh, flavor we have dead sea mineral bioplasma mood mask everything would be great if we didn't have phenoxetanol at the end of the list for me it is a no next one we have dead mineral c anti-aging system basically serum right Again, everything would be great if not phenoxyethanol at the end of the ingredients list. Then we have Manuka Honey Face Scrub and looking at the ingredients list. Again, there is nothing I would really say. I'm double checking. Uh, that would be unsafe. Let's move to another, uh, another product which is Moroccan Argan Oil Bath and, ma and Massage Body Oil. Now guys, you need to understand that Every time you see somewhere written argan oil or whatever oil, you need to really double check the ingredients because I've already recorded a video when I made a mistake and I bought argan oil which wasn't our argan oil. And here we've got the same situation. I am not saying that this is the uh, this is a bad product. I think it's perfect for massage. It's good, but it's a mix of different oils. It's not. Uh, it's actually first ingredient. It's sweet almond oil. 
the argan oil is such the fifth ingredient. This is a mix of oils. So if you're looking for pure argan oil, this is not the uh, this is not the product. But if you're looking for like a massage oil, a like good product, that would be something for you. Uh, guys, let's jump to the last example. For the last example, I have chosen an organic coffee skinny body scrub and it got the beauty awards of 2019 with ISIS. Then first ingredient we have uh, coffee, Arabica coffee seed powder, then we have water and we have different oils, vitamin E, caffeine uh, and then we have even hyaluronic acid, it's at the end of the ingredients list, so it's like very very little of it. If you are looking for something that is uh, hyaluronic acid is actually high in ingredients list, there is a body scrub that I've told you about, a coffee body scrub and it's by Bean Body Manuka Honey. Guys, that will be it for today's video when it comes to Dr. Organic. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions about any other products by this brand, comment down below. I'll try to check them out for you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will hopefully see you in the next video.